The speaker is Dr. David Williams. Thank you very much. Oh, let's see, I didn't, shouldn't have done that, right? So I'm pleased to present on behalf of uh, many people that have worked on this project, and uh, I'm sure I speak for everybody on the panel. In particular for ours, we're very grateful to the patients that uh, agreed to participate in this first in human uh, study. Uh, so these are my disclosures. It's been known for some time that the uh, severity of sickle cell disease is attenuated in patients that have a high level of uh, persistence of fetal hemoglobin expression. So you can see on the left, uh, pain in the middle, acute chest syndrome, a dreaded complication of the disease, and in fact, overall survival over time uh, is uh, attenuated when the hemoglobin F is elevated. And the extreme example of this is shown here. So when in utero, uh, one expresses almost all their hemoglobin as fetal hemoglobin, and then after birth met uh, with the dotted line in the middle, um, that uh, expression of fetal hemoglobin shuts off and the adult hemoglobin turns on, which in sickle cell disease, of course, is the sickle hemoglobin mutation. And as clinicians, we know that's uh, relevant because when we see children in the clinic in the first half a year to year of life, there is no symptoms of sickle cell disease. And then after the switch occurs, uh, that's when the patients develop the complications of sickle cell disease. And recently, basic science uh, uh, has uh, progressed to the level that we understand at the molecular level the regulation of that hemoglobin switch from fetal to adult hemoglobin. And the transcription factor called BCL11A, shown here, is a major uh, component of that uh, re uh, hemoglobin switch. So our approach has been to take this basic science finding and develop a, a vector, a lentiviral gene therapy vector, which uh, leads to the knockdown of this repressor called b cell of an a And this uh, induces the gamma globin back on, the fetal hemoglobin, but simultaneously uh, mut uh, silences the mutated sickle globin. So the advantage of this over other approaches, we think, is that the defective sickling beta globin is downregulated at the same time that the fetal hemoglobin is induced and the ratio of alpha to beta globin chains remain uh, balanced. So the vector that we developed is shown here, and the, uh, this is called a Schmier vector, where we've uh, used the B cell 11A targeting sequence embedded in an endogenous microRNA derived scaffolding. And the advantage of this is it delivers a more physiologic payload that resembles an endogenous microRNA and it also allows us to express this only in developing red cells, which avoids any toxicity in the stem cell compartment or in B cells, where B cell 11A is an essential transcription factor. So this is a study design. Uh, we mobilize peripheral stem cells using an agent called plerixophore, isolate CD34 cells, take them to the GMP facility, and transduce them with a recombinant lentivirus vector expressing this schmear. After the release criteria of this uh, GMP product, the patient's admitted and conditioned with busulfan, and then the new cells are infused. So we've now uh, enrolled nine patients on our study. We've, infused, we've developed a drug product for six, including the entire adult con uh, cohort shown here. The product is quite good. You can see the number of stem cells in the column marked CD34. The gene transfer efficiency called the VCN, which is very good. And the number of transduced cells in the last column, which is extremely high. And this shows you some of the uh, uh, preliminary data from the first three adult patients uh, who have significant follow-up and two additional uh, adolescent patients that have more recently uh, been uh, treated. Over on this graph, you see the number of fetal hemoglobin containing cells in the peripheral blood. And you can see in all the patients, there's an extremely high level between 60 and 75 percent, even uh, out now after 18 months. And on the right, you see a chart that tells you the more specifics, which is the amount of fetal hemoglobin in each of these red cells is quite high and the percent of the total hemoglobin in these sickle cells 
is really high, and this prevents any of the sickling that can occur uh, due to the sickle mutation. And uh, this has been associated already with some amelioration in the clinical sickle phenotype. So the clinical endpoints, so far there's been no basal occlusive episodes after the gene therapy has been uh, administered. There's been no uh, neurologic or respiratory events. And uh, transfusions have stopped in all the patients except for one specific patient who has terrible vascular disease, and so we elected prior to enrolling that patient on this study uh, to continue transfusions. Uh, one patient has had uh, recurrent priapism, a complication of sickle cell that he had uh, very severely before he started. And this shows you the blood components of these patients, and the point I would like to make here is that all the patients don't re now are not requiring transfusions with a low normal hemoglobin and with evidence that their hemolysis is uh, uh, attenuated. And in this one patient who has significant vascular disease, even though we've in, uh, continued to transfuse him as we planned up front, the amount of transfusions he's requiring is already, early point, is already um, reduced. So we've got an initial pilot study with eight subject consented, including pediatric patients. Five uh, patients have been infused with the longest follow-up of 18 months. We've uh, shown that b cell 11 a is a very effective molecular target in this disease, that our schmear vector is safe with very efficient transduction of stem cells, no adverse events related to the vector. The expression is clearly as designed only in red cells, and we have stable gene modification over a long period of time. The schmear works very well. There's broadly uh, expressed hemoglobin F with a high uh, amount of F per F cell and significant attenuation of the sickling phenotype. So our plans are to, we've just received IRB and NIH approval to expand this current pilot trial to 15 subjects. We're adding an additional biomarkers to the study and we're in the process now of expanding this into a multi-site uh, uh, phase two, three study with the NIH funding. <clears throat> 